I'm Jamie McHugh. I live on the Mendocino coast of California. I think if I lived 500 years ago, I would be a mystical monk. My work in this world is to assist myself and others fully actualize their potential as living elements of nature. In the somatics realm, as I understand it, and somatics essentially meaning first-person perception of one's own body. So it's not the body, it's my body, my arm, my skull, my pelvis. And in accessing that from an internal place, without the cultural construct of Am I looking good? How does it appear? But to actually rely more on sensation, sensate experience, not only what's percolating inside of us, but how it embraces everything that's around us. Our voice, our sound, our movement, these are birthrights that we are given that are integrated and move together. And as we are lost in this realm, of not knowing where we're going next as we move and breathe and sound and come to stillness. We are metaphorically and somewhat literally embodying the elements of nature. We become water. We become rock. We become air. So that's my work to offer people the experience of being their bodies and uncovering more of their true nature. What's really fundamental in my work is two things right now. One is how to create an environment of safety because nothing can really be received or can really penetrate the defenses of the body if we don't feel safe. So how do we feel safe? One way is to make all the activities I'm doing inclusive. And what I mean by that is simple, easy to repeat. You know, basically the only thing that's an impediment to most people is their inhibitions. Okay, so how to begin with something more internal and then little by little tease the voice out, tease movement out. So it's like a developmental process that we start internally and then move externally. And along the way in that path that we repeat what we've done before. So one of the things that I know from being a teacher is the first time you do something, it's kind of like, okay, what is this? The brain, the body are trying to make sense of it. You repeat it a second time there's already that sense of, oh, I know where this is going. I, I, I kind of, I know the lay of the land so I can follow this trail a little more easily. And by the third time you repeat something, you can start relaxing into it. So to create a safe sense of safety is also to create a relaxed countenance. And not only that, but a sense of permission, which I like to, you know, constantly come back to. It's like, as you do this activity, pause whenever you like. Take a big breath as much as you like, a small breath as much as you like. And as you continue to do this, if you want to move in relationship to this, begin to notice what feels good, what feels alive. And so in guiding people this way from the inside out, I'm trying to create already a sense of accomplishment because so much of what unfortunately a lot of education has done is taught us there's a right answer and a wrong answer and that I've got to get the right answer right away. So already the system is acclimated and habituated to trying to get it right. So it's a very different form of practice to say, here's some guideposts, here's some landmarks, if you will, on this journey through your body. Because I always look at the journey through the body like being out in the natural world. I'm following a trail for a while, and then I'm leaving the trail. 
I'm focusing on a specific point, and then I'm wandering. And so much of the wandering is where we get our own intuitive voice. All right, the focus is just there to create a specific track, to add new information into our repertoire of being a body. And then the wandering is that place where we truly are becoming our own dance, our own body. And this idea that, oh, I can stop whenever I want to stop. I can go whenever I want to go. I can expand when I want to expand. I can condense when I want to... You know, all of this begins to familiarize us with what is possible and who am I as a moving, breathing, expressive body. So the safety, the repetition, the basic tools, and the freedom to experiment and explore. And it's really all those elements together manifest in different ways, whether I'm doing one-on-one -on -one guiding, uh, whether I'm taking a group out into the environment, where, whether I'm teaching live stream online. But they, all those elements are in place. And for me, those are the underpinnings of my work. So this year, as I approached 65, I realized that, you know, I'm getting closer and closer to the horizon. And I'm trying to be very specific in how I use my time and what I want to leave behind as my legacy. So I've got a couple of book projects in the work, but for me, what's really important is how to bring together my love for this incredible planet, my devotion to life to bring that together with my visual art, nature being art, which is my photographing of the natural environment in ways that are somewhat unusual. Sometimes people look at my images and they're not sure if they're seeing a photograph or a painting and, or they're not really even sure what they're looking at. And I like that ambiguity because it makes people stop and pause and I'd really like to think that what my biggest gift in my teaching, in my art artistry right now, is helping people stop and pause. Listen, attune within, orient without. Come inside to go outside. <sighs> Receive what's all around. Orient within, orient without. Arrive, here we are.